Hi, I'm Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager here at Hopkins Center for the Arts. I'm speaking with Gwen Parton about her exhibition, Material Elements. Gwen, welcome. Thank you. Can you tell me about the inspiration for this particular body of work? Well, I was interested in working to make artist books, and I wanted to pick an, an overarching theme. Well, nature is a big one for me. And so uh, I thought, well, I could um, pick a theme where uh, elements that humans use in, from nature become the subject matter. And so I made a big list of different elements. And I already had a lot of material about wood to work with. And so I started with that one. Is nature a common theme, or what, what do you find uh, drives your art in an overall sense? Texture and pattern actually drive my, my artwork more than nature, but nature is a passion of mine that inf gets infused naturally mm -hmm. as a subject matter. Um, and I like the patterns and textures that appear in nature, so I'm often working with that. Uh, and texture and pattern being formal elements, and the mm -hmm. nature in this particular sense is content, form yeah. and content. You also happen to be a member of Form and Content I Gallery am. here in the Twin Cities. I am, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, is that another place we can see your work? Uh, not on a regular basis, because members um, get shows every uh, year and a half to two years. Mm -hmm. So unless there's a group show of some kind. Um, so my next show will be in February of 2023. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, might we expect uh, more natural themes or is the subject matter for that upcoming show, do you plan it to be different? Or maybe you don't know yet. It will be an extension of this project, okay. I believe. It's not totally determined, right. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned the textural aspects. That's one of the things that really appeals to me about your work. There is mm -hmm. both graphic texture and actual literal texture in that we've got embroidery in the work uh, and collaged elements that are quite um, dimensional mm -hmm. and significant. Uh, one is water words. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have, there's an overlay of cut paper and then uh, a real beautiful textural backdrop to that uh, cut paper and the words being cut. At first I thought surely uh, you must have used uh, um, like a cricket or some kind of <laughs> computer assisted cutting apparatus. And then I look close and it really appears as though it's hand cut. It is. Is it really? It is because I'm crazy. <laughs> no, uh, I don't like computer generated the hardness of it, mm -hmm. even though I typeset and designed that in the computer and printed it out on the paper that I cut it from, sure. uh, I, I cut it with a knife by hand. Wow. Yeah, because I like that. I love working with my hands. I love that kind of repetitive, busy work mm -hmm. like that, um, sometimes to the detriment of my shoulders. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's physically demanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the heart of my eyes. Sure. I have to do it in little uh, sessions. But mm -hmm. mentally meditative. Mm -hmm. Is that? Fair oh to say? yeah, I can just totally relax into it and mm -hmm. listen to music or the radio and just work on it. And that's the kind of thing I want to do when I don't feel like thinking sure. <laughs> about a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you do listen to music while you work? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I just listen to news or sure. sometimes silence. Yeah. It's nice if it's raining. I like just to listen to the rain, but that hasn't happened very much this year. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Um, there's a, a, quite a, a variety. There's a spectrum of processes uh, that you've used in, in your work, including uh, relief printing, uh, collagraph, mm -hmm. um, there's uh, uh, the, the cut paper and collage, there's monotype. Mm -hmm. um, and, and 
I think many of our viewers uh, have engaged with or, or know about relief printing, uh, mm -hmm. like, like a block print and whatnot, but um, monotype and collagraph are terms um, that are maybe less uh, prevalent. Can you speak to those? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is a monotype? A monotype is a print that you only get one image. It's not a permanent uh, repeatable image on the plate. And the plate is the thing you print from, that you ink up and print from. So in the case of the way I make the monotype is I use a sheet of plexiglass and I roll ink out or brush it on or sometimes splatter ink down. And, um, and I manipulate it with brushes and rags, sometimes take the ink away, which will reveal the paper color, mostly white. Um, and it can be wet or dry and it can have lots of effects. And then, uh, then the paper is put on top of that plate and I run it through an etching press. Um, an etching press is a, a has a bed and a roller and um, it kind of runs through like kind of like a, a laundry press and puts pressure down and, sure. and the pressure transfers the ink and uh, I need that kind of pressure for the effects I want. Mm. Um, so you can do some things by hand with hand pressure but it's usually not enough. So a lot of the um, like these ones behind us are strictly monotype where I've just put ink down and um, taken it away and sometimes in several layers. So that's a, mono, a monotype in the uh, way I do it. Sure. And then uh, collagraph. Can you explain how collagraph works? Uh, collagraph is a, um, it sounds like the word collage and that's exactly what it is. It's a print made from collaged elements. So in the case of <clears throat> mine, there's, um, I used cardboard or tag board and glued it together in various um, kind of puzzle things. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I sealed it with a seal, uh, something that keeps the ink from absorbing into the cardboard. And, um, and then I can ink it in various ways. I can rub ink in and it sits in the grooves or I can roll ink over the top, which is more like a relief type of print it's and catch the ink. It has elements of intaglio and relief yeah. because it could be the depressions mm -hmm. as you well could. as the high points. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And you can get really rich textures and I don't have anything that's super like uh, deep in what I've done. But um, so the, the bark pieces were done with collagraph. Mm -hmm. There's that piece there. And there's another technique called dry point. And dry point, you scratch into the plate, and it does create a permanent image. And you ink it, and it, the ink sticks in the scratches. And then you can print from that. And in that situation, what did you use as the plate? Uh, was a it plastic? Plexi? Like a, yeah, really thin. OK. Yeah. Made expressly for that purpose? or No, they were, it was actually, um, uh, some frames that I bought had uh, these plastic, um, you know, it, like where the glass would be, right? Right. Um, and the, it was really thin, and the frames themselves got damaged by water. Sure. But here I had this great plastic I could use for other purposes. So that's fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Repurposed materials. Right. Fantastic. Can you tell us uh, about your your process from from ideation to the final object? Do you use do you envision the piece in its totality uh, before you set out, or do you have a vague idea? Do you use um, study drawings? Uh, it's kind of a combination. I I often have this really great vision in my mind of what this project could be. And then as I go about trying to implement it, I realize, oh, okay, it's gotta look like this because I can't do that. Oh, sure. um, it's, you know, the vision in your mind is ideal mm -hmm. and the processes that you can use to create things, you know, have limitations. Sure. So 
often by the end it's really different from the original vision, but mm -hmm. it's still following the same trajectory or what I had it's, intended. That final object, though it doesn't match your initial uh, um, conception of its completion, does it turn out better, worse, different? Different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes along the way, I feel disappointed, like, oh, it's, it's just not working like, out like I thought. But then, you know, over a day or so, I'll let it sit with me. And I'll, Actually, it's pretty good. I'm okay with it now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, with the, the nature of the process I use in printmaking, there's so many variables. And it's, it's a, um, when I'm working on the press, there's a lot of things to think about. The pressure on the press, the order of the steps to get the ink on and the and everything, the paper ready and the paper has to be put down like a certain side up and down. I mean, there's so many things that I could mess up. Right. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not that pre people looking at the artwork would know sure. that I made a mistake or it wasn't like I meant it to be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I make the best of it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a, like mind boggling to me when I'm working on the press, all the things I have to think about. And, mm -hmm. then, and then I realize, oh my God, I didn't do this one thing that I mm -hmm. meant to do. Mm -hmm. And it was such a big part of it. And I think, well, do I start over or just go from here? Sure. And so, yeah. Making the best of it, how often is it better than what you had originally intended? I, I don't judge that way. Oh, really? I try not to because yeah. it would make me crazy. I, it's almost never like I saw it in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and I go, okay, that's how it came out. How can I use that? I, um, I, I learned a long time ago, I've been an artist a long time, and I was a graphic designer for many years, that learning to accept the outcome is part of the process mm. because um, you know you're using your body and your body moves and some days you're in the mood and some days you're just not just don't feel it and so you you learn to um, kind of roll with that mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes the outcome is kind of nice you know mm -hmm. uh, even if you didn't have a good day it, you look at it the next day and go, okay, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Do you, and it sounds like when you don't, when you're not quite feeling it, you power through anyway. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Or abandon, you know, yeah. there's lots of things that were made during the process of making the work for the show that aren't in the show. Lots of stuff, probably as much stuff as you're seeing here is not here. Um, because it just didn't work for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's R&D, research and development, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, or, you know, it's parts for future things. Uh -huh. Like um, the remnants, there's two pieces in here called remnants. One is a wood one and one is water. And those are all the sort of end pieces of um, the parts that I use for the books or parts that I really like but a part of that print really wasn't good, mm -hmm. but this little strip is really beautiful. So let's take that and yeah. put it together with all the other really nice little pieces and sure. make a quilt. And that's what those are about. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you work in other mediums? I do. I, I do a lot of drawing. I draw probably four or five hours a day. Um, and this show doesn't have a lot of drawing in it because it's based on printmaking mm -hmm. and collage. But the drawing informs what I do and it helps me explore different patterns and ideas. And um, I, I purposefully kept drawing out of the work in this show because I wanted it to be about the printmaking. Mm. Um, but there are a few things in here where I doctored them with drawing because they weren't, they didn't, there was a, like a little 
blip that I fixed with a, a color pencil or something, you sure. know. Um, but that's not, to me, really drawing. It's just part of making it work. Right. So. A refinement. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, drawing is a big part of the other work that I do. And I find drawing very immediate, and there's far less mm -hmm. um, technical variables that one needs to be juggling at the time. I mean, it's as fast exactly. as thought. Right? Yeah, and I... I um, I, when I draw, I work with a system. I come up with a pattern and a set of colors and a way of putting them down, and I follow this system till I finish the drawing or fill, mm. it, fill it in. And it's, it's, you know, once I've established the groundwork, then actually having it happen is a lot simpler than uh, the printmaking work. Sure. So. In, and in the printmaking, and you spoke of all of the, the elements to that that you need to be considering as you're doing it. And mm -hmm. I imagine it's the amount of ink that you put on the, the substrate, whether it's a plate or a, a, yeah. a collagraph, and the amount of pressure and yeah. the registration of uh, whatever mm -hmm. the accepting yeah. medium is. What other elements might we not be thinking of in relation to the printmaking processes? Um. Well, when I make, when I'm working with the monotype, I'm often using um, one piece of, one printed piece to print onto another piece. It's mm -hmm. called an offset print or a counterproof. And sometimes if I want to sort of plan a series of things, I'm thinking of how do these two layer together? So there's some layering mm -hmm. considerations um, and, uh, and the other thing is the consistency of the ink. Like, is it thin or thick? Is it too sticky? Yeah. Some colors, especially white, are really tacky. Mm. So you have to add more additives to them to make them flow. Sure. And those all that. And sometimes um, those things are just one more thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this might be a bit granular, but I know a lot of viewers are artists themselves, and they'd be curious. Uh, do you use oil-based uh, inks or water-based inks or, or mix? Uh, I use oil-based inks mostly, <laughs> but to show some of the water pieces, I used watercolors. And I made watercolor monotype where you paint onto uh, mylar, mm -hmm. like frosted mylar, mm -hmm. and you prepare it with gum arabic, which is a, a medium in watercolor. And it basically helps the watercolor lift off. Okay. So you would paint onto that. Um, I painted on the mylar, and then I, you let it dry. Mm -hmm. And because monotype printing, you wet the paper first. Um, it helps absorb all the ink. What this does is it reactivates the watercolor, mm -hmm. and so then it picks up exactly the. It looks like I painted it with watercolor. And then people think, might say, well, why don't you just paint on the paper? That's what I was thinking. There's a slight difference, and it's a, it's a plainer difference. In watercolor, if you paint on the paper, you see a little puckering of the paper where the water was. There's a little granulation that happens at the edges that makes it a little shiny, mm -hmm. like um, because that's where the gum arabic is in the paint a little more and it looks like it's on the surface but in printmaking um, especially monotype the the ink is more integral to the paper so it looks like it's in the paper mm -hmm. rather than on the surface of the paper sure. that yeah yeah and it's, it's a just nuance a, thing it is and it's just a preference of how I want it to look yeah. plus I wanted to try the technique sure it's new to you yes mm -hmm. yeah. Right. For to, this learned, show, yeah, for for um, in the water book, there's some pages in there that are all about that, and the um, the one that's the water um, medley has um, bubbles, like looks like bubbles in the back. I actually used soap and made bubbles and put watercolor in that and blew it through a, a sock wow. to get the bubble. 
Yeah. Texture. I'd like to, you bring up uh, the artist books, of which there are three in this show. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, text in some of the work too, but a lot of the text isn't in the book pieces that, that I see, which yeah. is an interesting contrast, mm -hmm. and maybe just to me, uh -huh. but I find it fascinating. And there are elements of legible words in some work, and then there's a, a beautiful calligraphy in the traditional sense of, of beautiful mark making, but it also itches at me like, I should be able to read this. This looks like words, uh -huh. you know, in the piece over here. It uh -huh. looks like, was that actually handwriting where you worked over it to the point that it wasn't quite legible or yeah. was it meant to kind of mimic that quality? It probably was handwriting. I've done yeah. drawings and that I guess is a drawing mm -hmm. um, where I write just my natural handwriting in, in a way that um, sort of layers over itself, and then I play with the negative spaces. So that thing you saw is probably me cutting out the negative spaces of the things I wrote. Maybe that's what you saw. Or there is another one. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I have done a lot of work with words, um, more in drawing than printmaking. The cutouts that we talked about earlier yeah, probably <laughs> hark back to my graphic designer days and mm -hmm. me wanting to do things that are more rigid like that. Sure. So. Do you ever have a concern that people will be, because when the words are legible and we're conditioned to read things, right? I mean, I'm looking out the windows and there's all these signs and, I, and I'm, I'm reading the mm -hmm. sign. Are you ever concerned that that portion of the work will um, draw more attention than the other areas? Do you, do you consider the balance of that or is I, that not a concern? I, I hadn't really thought about it. I do know from um, that words, people are always gonna try to figure out what it says, even if I don't need them to know what it says. And you know, that's okay. Um, the words that are in the piece I think you're mentioning are all w words that are um, types of trees. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody might look at it and go, oh, I see um, redwood or something in there. Mm -hmm. uh, they might see it. They may not. They might just see gobbledygook. Yeah. But it's more about the sort of effect it gives that I like than anybody being able to read it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just really like the spaces and the shapes. So. The, the one with the water words, I learned some, some new words. It expanded my vocabulary. Oh. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I did a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> I always do research when I do a big project like this. I look things up. I look up imagery. I look up um, different things that I may not have thought of. So for wood, I looked up lists of types of wood. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't end up using the wood words. It's, I did a, a piece like the water words, mm -hmm. but the technical aspects of the printing of it didn't work out. And that's why it didn't end up in the show sure. because um, the printing didn't work. So, and I you didn't, didn't have, even need to share that, I didn't but you have, did. I didn't have time yeah. to redo it. Um, or I thought, well, it's not necessary. <laughs> I'll just yeah. move on, yeah. you know. Um, but I have a whole other cutout of wood words wow. that's like a little bit like the water words. But we may see it in the future. Yes, may you up. may. Um, mm -hmm. I do plan on making some more um, uh, of, from this series of different topics like stone and air and other things that are material elements. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, relatedly, what's next for you? What, what is the next thing? Um, probably I'm going to work on the stone theme. It's yeah. really been uh, something that's um, been interesting to me. I really, uh, I've been doing some drawings that look like agates 
and that's what sort of driving me to start there. But I also um, enjoy uh, w how stone exists naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, in you know, like at the edge of a, a lake, you'll see the stones in the, in, on the beach, and I also like this uh, thing that happens where you have concrete and you see the aggregate in there next to say asphalt or something. So those mm -hmm. contrasts and how things happen in nature versus things that are man-made mm -hmm. are of interest to me, and and that is also part of the theme of this show. You'll see it with more with the wood than the water because it's hard to make water anywhere look man-made. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas wood, you can see, you know, if somebody sawed it with a saw, sure. you can see the grain. You wouldn't see that if you're looking at a tree. Right, right. right. You know? Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Gwen, where else might we see your work? Um, at my studio in the Northrop King building, um, Studio 452, I, uh, I'm intermittently open. Okay. Um, I posted open days on my website. Super. GwenParton.com um, for the fall. So, and for the most part, I'll stick to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, can't guarantee <laughs> things, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> I'm going to write this down right now. Yeah. Right. Uh, so there I have, you know, a couple open studio events. I also am part of the Longfellow. Lola. Lola. Yeah. The Lola crawl. I'll be part of that. Awesome. And um, social so, media. Oh, yeah. Uh, my Instagram handle is Gwen Averill. G-W-E-N-A-V-E-R-I-L. And Facebook, Gwen Parton Artwork, or Gwen, just look up me up. Uh, you'll see me both places, although I won't accept friend, re friend requests on my personal one. Sure. That's fair. So I just don't. It's, yeah, but I have a, a business page, Gwen Parton Artwork. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Gwen, thank you so much for sharing your work with our You're community. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure and ours. I'm Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager here at Hopkins Center for the Arts. We were speaking with Gwen Parton uh, on her show Material Elements on view in the second floor lobby gallery at the Hopkins Center for the Arts until September 10th, 2022.